my background is from um, <clears throat> extreme metal, mm, sort of so close in proximity to black metal that you might as well say that I come from a black metal background if you want to be uh, slightly less precise than 100%. I don't care, it's just the purists, you know, who uh, react when someone slightly mislabels and slaves black metal and you know anything to, to annoy a purist is, is great um, they're you know they're part of the dogmatic problem of the of the world anyways um, so what is this relation that I also talked about Norwegian black metal being influenced to, to begin with by 70s pioneering electronic music which sounds kind of weird um, what is the relation? I think the relation is that we're trying to build a sort of a hypnotic state, in a sense, through music. There's a lot of repetition. There's a sort of very intense use of sounds that borderlines on noise because it's so massive, it's so dense. Um, and it's not really about, you know, like in, in, in melody is important, of course. You know, you have leads, you have your vocal lines and... And in, in electronic music, you have the little snippets or the loops or whatever that's re repeating itself. But there's also something about the form in itself by continuing and sort of mesmerizing or numbing even uh, maybe the, the, the conscious mind in much the same way as people experience by using mantras. You know, the classic you've seen in the movies, the OM um, thing, or people who use... <coughs> repetitive movements uh, you see the you know some religious people rocking back and forth some of them are just insane but some of them are actually using it as a way of numbing down their uh, conscious m presence uh, to allow thoughts to, to f float more freely uh, between the subconscious and, and the conscious because you have this sort of this guard that's if you, the, the image of, of a guard could be the consciousness, the ordinary, everyday consciousness. And there's a, a guard that makes sure that you're on point, um, you're vigilant about your surroundings and how you drive your car and that kind of thing. And try and, you know, it lets through some daydreaming and puts you, puts you on autopilot, but then um, it doesn't really want you to go all the way down into the subconscious where things are communicated through images and metaphors and images and uh, and so forth. Um, I might have said images twice there. Um, so this whole technique of meditation or, or uh, of altering states of mind through, through rit rituals is uh, is about the gaining access to that, the lower um, secret chambers of biomechanical um, super uh, <laughs> super thought, so to speak, or the spirit, if you want to be religious about it. Um, and I think these two genres are approaching that in the same kind of way. They're numbing and also they're that kind of alien, sort of dark. Uh, it's not scary in itself. Like, how could music be scary? It's a, it's a combination of notes, which is frequencies, different frequencies. Um, how, that, that can't be scary in itself. It's just sounds, it's waves, it's particles, whatever way you want to regard it. So it, it's just the way we experience it as alien and it's uh, sort of out of everyday context that gives this eerie vibe to it or whatever. And also maybe because it draws, it, it has tendencies to lean towards something mystical, a mystical experience. It's, it's painting pictures of gothic cathedral, gargoyles, um, dreamlike landscapes with weird uh, creatures and, and mythological beings and so on, which I guess is scary because it's so unusual to us. If you lived in the world of H.P. Lovecraft with uh, Cthulhu's uh, and, and, you know, monsters and and giant gods from the day you were born, I guess it wouldn't wouldn't be scary. I think this everyday life would be pretty scary. No idea if I answered anything there, but yeah, it was fun talking about it. Um, 